Red Buddy here from Back Road Buddies of Red Tail Lodge. And today we're in John Martin Reservoir State Park in Colorado. But the video we want to share with you today is about Colorado National Monument and the surrounding area. So we had been to Colorado National Monument before, but it always felt like we were rushing through it. We'd only take like part of a day to go through it, and it really deserves more than that. So this time we stayed inside the park at Saddlehorn Campground for three nights. So we had a lot of time to really enjoy the park this time. So we were coming from Payona State Park. So we came in from the east side. So we came in the east entrance and the Saddlehorn Campground is actually closer to the west entrance. So we came in and we had lunch at um, Devil's Kitchen picnic area, which is a really nice picnic area there. And then we drove almost the whole Rim Rock Drive to get over to the campground. And we stopped at, we tried to stop at all the overlooks along the way, but we missed one, but we got that the next day. So we stopped at all the overlooks and everyone is just really gorgeous view of these canyons and beautiful rock formations. And there was one um, overlook where the canyon wall is just set up to do this perfect echo. And try to listen for it in the video. It sounded a lot louder in person when we were there than it comes across in the video, but listen for it. And then we got to the campground and we had dinner. And then there's two short trails right there from the campground. So Window Rock Trail, so we did that after dinner. Window Rock Trail and then I think it's called Canyon Rim Trail. And you end up at the visitor center and then that's real close to the campground. So we did that that evening and the sun, you know, the sun was getting low in the sky and really making the rocks kind of have a nice glow to them. So that was nice. And so the first full day we had, we did a lot of hiking. So we started out at um, Ute Canyon Trail. So the one trail heads up on Rimrock Drive and it's actually an 11 mile trail that goes all the way down into Glenwood Springs. We didn't want to go that far. We just wanted to get down into the canyon to get a different perspective. So that's what we did. We started up at Rimrock Drive and then you do a steep descent down into the bottom of the canyon. And then once we were down there, we didn't go very far and we came back up. So that was a nice experience. And then we went all the way back over to the east entrance to Devil's, Kin um, Devil's Kitchen. And there's a trail called Devil's Kitchen. And that's a really, that was probably our favorite hike in the whole park. And it's a great family hike. And you go out and you go to these um, rock formations that they call Devil's Kitchen. And it's these really tall kind of rock spires that kind of make this room and you can climb up in there. So you're kind of in this, I mean, there's no ceiling to it, but these great big, huge, tall spires that you're surrounded with. And it's just, it's just really kind of cool. And then we got back to Devil's Kitchen picnic area, had lunch again, <laughs> the same place. And then we took, um, there's another trail right there called Serpent's Trail. Now Serpent's Trail actually follows the original road into the park. And I think it was in service from the 1920s to the 1950s and it's really windy and steep and um, it was kind of interesting because back then cars didn't have fuel injection so some of them had to go up the slope backwards so the fuel would flow into the engine. I'm like I couldn't imagine driving cars up this trail going forwards let alone backwards but it makes a nice hiking trail now and it kind of winds back and forth so you get alternating views over um, Grand Junction and then over the canyons in Inside the park. So that was a nice trail. And then from there we started heading back to the west entrance to the campground. And we stopped at the overlook that we missed and then we did, um, it's called Coke Ovens Trail. There's a Coke Ovens Overlook and then there's also a Coke Ovens Trail. 
And we started on this trail and it goes down a little bit and it takes you over to the coke ovens, rock formations, so you're at the end of it so you can kind of view over the top of them. So that's kind of cool. But as we were heading down these couple of switchbacks, we looked below us and about 30 yards below us was this big horn sheep. So we stopped and we're taking pictures and video and then all of a sudden we realized this sheep was heading up the slope towards us and we kind of panicked for a minute <laughs> and then he like turned and went off another direction but um, it was a reminder that you know you have to respect wild animals and give them their space so I don't know what the deal was if we were too close or we overstayed our welcome or he just wanted to go that way and it had nothing to do with us but still that's a good reminder and so that was the end of the first full day we had there. And then the next full day, we actually decided to go down into Fruta, which is just outside the west entrance there. And there's a couple trails in that area called the Dinosaur Trails. And they um, are trails in the areas where there's been a lot of um, dinosaur bone excavations. And some of them still have active quarries, but there is no active digs going on right now. So we were a little disappointed with those trails. It was um, Fruta, Paleo area, Dinosaur Hill, and Riggs Hill. I mean, there was some plaques and some information stuff. It was like, oh, bones were removed from here, but we were kind of disappointed with those trails. But anyway, we did them anyway. And then the final day, partial day we had, we actually did two of the short trails that we hadn't done yet, and one was Alcove Trail. That kind of takes you back into this dead end with these alcoves, and it's kind of cool. And then there's Otto's Trail, which takes you out to this point, and you can get a good view of the Independence Monument rock formation. And while we were there, we happened to spot two rock climbers that were part way up the, the rock formation there. So that was, that was kind of neat. And since we didn't really see any dinosaur fossils on the dinosaur trails the day before, we actually drove out west of Fruta and there's one more trail called Trail Through Time. And that um, also has a quarry there, which they aren't digging right now. But there, along that trail, there actually is several dinosaur fossils that you can see along the trail. So we finally got to see our dinosaur fossils. <laughs> so that kind of wraps up our experience. And um, so sit back, relax, and enjoy Colorado National Monument.
Well, thanks for watching. If you want more details of our experience at Colorado National Monument, you can find the link to our related blog post down in the description below. So go check that out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We'd really appreciate that. Ta-ta for now.